Hello, my name is Jack LaRiviere and I'm an AGA CMP student at the University of Northern Colorado. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to perform a neck and abdominal exam on my patient Kristen here. Um, we'll start with the neck and then move on to the abdomen. So first, um, we will inspect the neck um, just for um, symmetry, we're going to be looking that the chin is midline on the body, indicating that there's no torticollis or congenital defects, uh, musculoskeletal defects, that sort of thing. Um, next, we'll be looking for any lesions or masses around the neck, indicative of um, a malignancy or lymphadenopathy. And I don't see anything upon my initial visual inspection. Um, next, we will assess range of motion. So I'll have Kristen extend, rotate, and flex her neck. So Kristen, would you um, tell me if you have any pain or difficulty doing so, but would you uh, flex your head forward so that your chin goes towards your chest exactly? Now how about extending your head backwards? as far as you can go. That seems like a normal range of motion. And then we'll have Kristen look straight ahead and rotate from left to right. Uh, everything looks normal. Does everything feel normal to you? No pain. Great. So um, after that, we'll move on to auscultation of some structures within the neck. Carotid arteries are one that we'll start with. We're looking for a brewery for which there shouldn't be one. Um, this would be indicative of... Um, atherosclerosis or some other disease process. Uh, we'll also be auscultating the thyroid to um, listen for a brewery, uh, which could be indicative of hyperthyroidism or some other disease process as well. So um, I'll just be listening upon the sternocleidomastoid muscle line with my the bell of my stethoscope on either side, and then I'll listen to um, the thyroid after that. So we'll start with the carotids. And what I should have done is had my patient Kristen take a deep breath and then exhale and hold that breath so that no air moving through the trachea with her breaths would be would pass for a brewery. Um, I don't hear anything, but that, that would have been the correct way to do that. Um, next, we'll listen to the thyroid cartilage, or the thyroid gland. Um, I'll be listening to around the isthmus and then along the lobes of the thyroid as well. So I'll go just below the cricoid cartilage for the isthmus. And if you would take a deep breath, exhale, and hold it. Perfect. Perfect. So I don't hear anything. Um, all findings appear to be normal at this point. Uh, so next, I will move on to palpation of um, the thyroid and um, also of some lymphatics as well in the neck. So um, there are two approaches that you, one can use with the thyroid, the uh, um, anterior approach and then also the posterior approach. I'll perform both here. So uh, with the anterior approach, what I'll be doing is kind of pushing the trachea side to one to um, one side, and then the thyroid tissue will kind of pile up along that line, um, allowing me to palpate it. So I, I'm going to be very gentle, Kristen, and I'll push the thyroid just a little bit using the pads with my third finger. Everything feels normal there. Uh, there are no immovable masses or, um, or things, nodules that I'm feeling. Same thing on the other side here. And everything appears to be normal from the anterior approach. So next I'll do the posterior approach. I'll get behind Kristen. And Kristen, I'm going to be putting my hands around your neck here 
just to let you know. And you'll want to let patients know that have mental health histories, PTSD, histories of abuse, that sort of thing. So what I'll be doing is kind of feeling along the, um, feeling for the thyroid and cricoid cartilages. And then I will have Kristen swallow. Now you can only do this one or two times and have a patient swallow without any liquid. So you've really got to be pretty thorough when you're doing this initially. So um, again, I'm, I'm locating structures and feeling for any nodules, masses, um, any immovable uh, masses, that sort of thing. So if you would, Kristen, go ahead and swallow here. Okay, and everything feels normal. All right, so next we'll, we will um, move on to um, lymphatics. And so I will start with um, some lymphatics in the head and move down into the neck and into the clavicular area. So first I'll be um, assessing the preauricular lymph nodes here. And again, normal findings. The postauricular right behind the ears. A little further back, we're looking at occipitals. And then tonsillar glands. Definitely palpable, but nothing that is enlarged or immovable, that sort of thing. Then the, um, sub, the mandibular. Also, same thing, palpable, but nothing abnormal. And then the submental here. And all findings appear to be normal here. So um, we could go with the anterior cervical next. Nothing. Posterior cervical. Deep cervical, which is underneath the sternocleidomastoid muscle, a little bit harder to assess. Sometimes you can't do it, so we'll, we'll omit that one for now. Um, and then we'll go with the supraclavicular, inside the uh, clavicular fossa here. Definitely palpable, but nothing abnormal. And then the infraclavicular as well. Perfect. So um, that... Um, concludes our neck exam. Next we'll be performing an abdominal exam, so we'll have to change the camera angle a little bit first. And then Kristen will have you lie down just like that. Thank you. All right. Okay, so first with the abdomen, I'm gonna just be visualizing to make sure that um, the shape of the abdomen is normal that the movement of the abdomen is normal. Obviously she's breathing, so her abdomen is moving. I'm going to be looking for um, any pulsations. Um, you can actually see a slight pulsation in her um, abdomen just above her umbilicus, which is a normal finding on thinner patients. Um, and that is the aorta pulsating. If it were a heavier patient, that would be an abnormal finding. Um, also, I'm looking for any peristalsis that sometimes you can see, um, any vascular distributions that are abnormal, like a telangiectasia, um, and then any hair distribution that's normal, um, that her umbilicus is midline, etc. So um, upon just visualization, everything looks normal. So next, I'm going to auscultate. I'm going to auscultate um, all four bowel quadrants, and then I'll be auscultating for bruise. Um, in various places, which I will describe when I'm doing it. All right, so um, normal bowel sounds are 5 to 34 um, sounds per minute. So um, if, if they were, if I was deeming them to or suspected them to be hypoactive, I need to listen to each quadrant for at least two minutes. Um, so Everything appears to be normal as far as bowel sounds go. So next, I will be listening to um, 
being in order for a brewery, I'll be listing for uh, Reno Breweries, also Femoral and Iliac Breweries as well. So, here I'm listening for a hepatic hum, which could be indicative of um, liver disease. And next, the Iliac. And Femoral. Lots of bowel subs, but no breweries, which is great by me. So, um, next, I will um, percuss. Uh, the abdomen at different points. I'll be looking for tympani in the various uh, abdominal quadrants, and then I'll be um, percussing the liver to assess for enlargement to determine a border, and then also um, percussing the spleen, uh, which um, should not be, uh, any findings may be abnormal. So um, I'll be using my um, forefinger or my middle finger on my dominant hand, which is my left and then using my right hand to um, percuss that middle finger lightly. So um, I will be listening as I do this. And all of those are tympanic and normal. Next I'll be looking for the liver border. So I'll start at the fifth intercostal space here and I'll count upwards. And then I'll be moving more caudal as I, as I uh, progress. So I can hear that tympani within the lung. And here, there seems to be a bit more dullness. So we can determine that that is the cup of the liver here. I have a landmark that's a freckle on, on um, Kristen's body that I can use kind of as a visual marker. And then I'll move my way down here. And I'm, I'm at the midclavicular line as I do this. Okay. And it seems that it ends right after her rib cage. That's probably seven or eight centimeters, which is a completely normal finding. Six to 12 centimeters is what we're looking for. Um, next, I'll be percussing around the spleen. And actually, so, I should barely be able to hear much. And then next, I will, um, have Kristen take a deep breath and percuss again and look for that tympani to make sure that her spleen has been displaced. So take a deep breath in and hold it. Thank you. And the spleen is um, withdrawn into the rib cage, which is a normal finding indicating that there's no splenomegaly. Next I'll move on to light palpation. So um, I will start with the bowel quadrants and then um, palpate the liver and spleen. And I'll first start with light palpation to get the patient used to my hands. And I'm looking for any abnormal masses or any pain that results from this palpation. And I'm just kind of doing a rolling motion here. I can feel the inferior border of the liver there. And next we'll move on to some deeper palpation here. Normal findings for the liver. And again, nothing for the spleen, which is a normal finding. 
Um, next, I will be um, percussing the, um, oh, and you know what, I sh should have done this before I palpated, but I will be percussing the costo vertebral angle um, to assess for um, pyelonephritis or hydronephrosis. Uh, a um, painful finding here would, would be positive for um, to suspect one of those things. So, does this hurt at all, Kristen? Take a deep breath. No. Okay. How about this side? No. Okay, perfect. So that's a, a normal finding. Um, next, we can um, move on to um, some um, assessments that would be indicative of appendicitis or cholecystitis. So the first one is called Murphy's sign. I'll basically be pressing in right below um, the um, rib cage and pressing into the area of the liver and the gallbladder. Does that hurt, Krista? No. If she um, was developing cholecystitis or had it, um, that would be a painful finding. Um, next, we'll assess for um, appendicitis. So uh, the first thing that we would do was um, if somebody had right lower quadrant pain, we would um, assess for um, Robson's sign, which I would um, press on the left lower quadrant. And if the pain worsened in the right lower quadrant, then that would be indicative of appendicitis. So I would press in this way. Um, another um, test that we would then um, assess for appendicitis would just be rebound tenderness. So applying pressure should not hurt the patient as much as abruptly um, taking pressure off of the abdomen. So I would press deeply and then quickly release. And if the pain uh, was determined to be greater upon that release, that would be a positive finding. The next would be um, a psoas maneuver. So Kristen, I'm going to have you lift your right leg, keeping it straight, just a couple inches off of perfect. And if because if the you can put it down, no thanks. If the um, the abdomen was um, in a retrocecal position, that would um, kind of um, aggravate it and be a positive finding. Um, another one would be the obturator maneuver, where I, here I have Kristen um, bend her knee, and I would bring her leg midline. Any pain felt there in the abdomen? No. Great. That would be a positive finding for appendicitis as well, uh, if, that, if she, pain were present. Um, okay, great. That concludes the abdominal and neck exam. Thanks very much for watching.